Okay, here we go. We got some interesting data out. Uh, can money buy happiness? What's your answer? I think there's a great country song by Chris Jansen that says, nobody can buy me a boat. <laughs> Which is a great song, by the way. Incidentally, one of the fun things about being in Nashville is you you run into people that you just you wouldn't run into anywhere else because there's all these great artists. Alex, I haven't told you the story. This is a little bonus, and it's tied to the tied to the content. Okay, uh, so I I'm not going to say the guy's name. I don't want to get into all this, but I ran into at a Halloween party three years ago, and I say Halloween party. It was a house in our neighborhood where all, all the parents were invited to bring their kids by for about 20 minutes before they all hit the streets, and they were offering chili and snacks. And so it was kind of fun. So I showed up, and I'm on the back patio. Uh, Bob, you'll appreciate this. I'm on the back patio of Bill Hampton's house. And all the dads are out there, right? Because we're all like, man, we'd like to stay here. None of us want to hit the streets. You know, Halloween is, you know, like, like no dad really wants to do that, you know, unless your kid's four. And the first couple of years, it's really exciting. Am I right, Alex? Then they get to like 9, 10, or 11, you're like, oh, geez. Can we just let them go? I don't know if Nathan's there yet. He's got the youngsters. But anyway, Halloween's great. So we're on the back porch, and and we're doing the obligatory, hey, what's your name? What do you do? And I meet a guy who's a big-time songwriter, and he co-wrote that song, Buy Me a Boat, by Chris Jansen. Uh and the whole thing's about can money buy me happiness? And he basically says, no, it can buy me a boat. It can buy me a Yeti, you know, full of all this beer and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, they wrote this song in about 10 minutes. There's a little interesting fact. Buy Me a Boat was written, Alex, in about 10 minutes. They just got in a room. They were getting ready to sit down for a writing session. They weren't even trying to write anything. And somebody said something. Somebody said the other. And they said that. And they just nailed it. And the thing goes on to be a massive hit. True story, 10 minutes. So there you go. Can money buy happiness? New data out from Harris Poll, one of the uh, very legitimate polling companies in the United States, came out with a poll in August. Now, this is interesting. They asked people, what do they think the key to financial happiness really is? 59% of respondents uh, said that they do believe happiness can be purchased. I tell you, I've purchased some things that have made me very happy. You know, I think there's something there. The average person, though, believes that it would take having $1.2 million in the bank to be truly financially happy. Now, these articles, they don't give you all the ins and outs of this. So is the $1.2 million in the old checking? Is it in your retirement account? This I don't know, but, but, but nonetheless, let's go deeper. What did people say about an annual salary that would make them happy? The average respondent thinks that they need $284,000 uh, each year to be happy. Now, let's break it down by generation. And so they asked each generation what you would need to earn annually and what your net worth would need to be to be happy. Gen Z uh, said they needed to make $128,000 a year to be happy. God bless them. These, these kids are just starting out, and they go, I need $128,000 to be happy. And they, they need their net worth to be $487,711. I always laugh at these things. I usually round up, but it's like, where'd they come up with the $711? Does that mean that the $487,710 is not enough? You get my point. Millennials, what do millennials say they need to make to be happy every year? $525,000 with a net worth of $1.7 million. All right, millennials. Now, this is where it gets fascinating, I think. Gen X, my generation, they think that they only need to make $130,000 a year with a net worth of $1.2 million to be happy. What's going on with my generation? Anybody catch the sarcasm? Maybe my generation, because we're middle-aged now, we have a much more realistic view of what's going on in the world. How about the boomers? Oh, God love the boomers. Everybody makes fun of the boomers. It was my mom and dad. The boomer says they need to make $124,000 a year with a net worth of $1 million. A 2023 study co-authored by Nobel Prize recipient 
Daniel Kahneman found that happiness can, in fact, improve with higher earnings of up to $500,000 a year. Again, not really shocking. You know what this just says? That Look, the larger the income you have, theoretically, the more margin you have, the more freedom you have to be able to make the basic purchases and you feel a certain amount of peace. Not really surprising. But there's more to this survey than just annual salary. According to the survey, inflation, high interest rates, and student loans are weighing on Americans' financial security. Uh, Having the comfort to spend money on everyday items can boost the feeling of financial happiness. For instance, let's go back to the millennials who, and I get it, millennials are in that age group right now where they're like, it's time to get it. 40s on the horizon. We got to get it. This is my time to get it. You know, and they're like, okay, so they want to make $525,000 to feel happy. But millennials also said to the tune of 62% of millennials said they would be willing to pay $7 for a daily coffee because, you ready for this, of the joy it brings. $7. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something in the booth. I make a pot of coffee. I'm the only one that drinks coffee in my house. I make a pot of coffee every night. I set it, and it's ready for me, and I wake up in the morning. I got a little routine, which, by the way, here's another bonus life hack that you didn't come to the show for today, but you're going to thank me. If you keep your house cool, and in the wintertime, no matter what you keep the heat on, your coffee mug will be cool in the morning. If you would like your coffee to stay hotter, I got a little tip for you. You... Fill the mug up with water, you put it in the microwave for a minute, or if you really want it to be hot, two minutes, and then dump the water out, pour your coffee in, and watch how warm your coffee stays. Bob, have you done this before? Yeah. Bob, he's a renaissance man. This is a life hack that changed my life. But I get up every morning, and I, I've got a pot of coffee waiting on me. I don't need to buy a cup of coffee to feel happy. But the reason I'm having a little fun with this is, is to give you what's behind the data. If millennials say that spending $7 a day for a cup of coffee makes them happy, then it it tells us more. They want to make more just so they can spend more. That's the issue. And here's what the boomers know and Gen X know, because watch the data. It skews as you get older. People say, I need less money to be happy. Why? Because they've learned the art, and this is an art form, of keeping more money. But younger people, by the way, this will always be the case when you do a study like this. So here's the whole point of it. It's not how much money you make that will give you happiness. It's how much money you keep that will give you happiness. That is the game changer. And I think it's important that you have that mental shift because the amount of people that make $500,000 in this country is extremely low, extremely low. Yet millennials say, I make $500,000, well, then I'm going to be happy. Well, are you? Are you going to be happy? I don't know. I don't think it's about the $7 coffee. I think it's about the freedom to spend because you have more. 